Thank you, Lord. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Shall I 
your name thank you my father in Jesus name we worship clap your hands for Jesus amen Micah 7 verse 8 Rejoice not against me O my enemies For if I fall Micah 7 8 I shall arise when I sit in darkness The Lord Shall be a light unto me Amen That's a very deep verse of scripture And it's very heavy And if we are going to consider That whole verse of scripture Then we may need weeks to just look into that verse. We are going to take the verse, the very first phrase, rejoice not, O my enemy. We are going to take that phrase first, and that's what we are going to dwell on as a teaching. Cutting short your enemy's joy. Cutting short your enemy's joy. Your enemies may have the first say, but they don't have the last say. Satan may include you, but he can't conclude you. In life, if you have eminence, get ready for enemies. Once you are eminent, then there will be enemies. No matter how good you are, how nice you are, how kind you are, there are enemies. As a matter of fact, there are people who don't like you, but they don't know yet why they don't like you. They are still trying to figure out why they don't like you. Okay, so enemies are normal. Genesis 14 verse 20. Abraham, God has delivered your enemies into your hand. Genesis 22 17. In blessing I will bless you. In multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And the sand upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Genesis 49 verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy leg shall be on the neck. Of your enemies exodus 22 20, 23 22 he says god will be an enemy to your enemy an adversary to your adversary in numbers chapter 10 verse 35 psalm chapter 68 verse 1 it was a double phrase the phrase and statement was made by moses but repeated by david david most of the statements david made were quotations that he got from the patriarchs before him so in Numbers 10, 35, Psalm 68, 1, let God arise and let what? His enemies be scattered. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, verse 7, Deuteronomy 28, verse 25, the Bible says, that so shall the Lord cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come in one way and they shall live in seven ways. When an enemy comes in one way and lives in seven ways, it means the enemy will not live complete. It will be scattered. To live in seven ways means your head takes one route. Your hands take another route. Your body takes... So anyone that ganks up against you shall be scattered. Yeah. Psalm chapter 18 verse 3. Focus themselves. That they will not eat. That is how... How dedicated and addicted to your downfall your enemies are. When you see... You see, the day God opens your eyes eyes to see the ploy and ploy nobody tell you to pray even when people stop praying you keep praying when they tell you it's okay you say it's not okay what is fighting me is strong but now that people are on fire it's why others are getting weak it's like noah 
When the whole world was sinning, Noah was righteous. When the world stopped sinning, Noah started sinning. When the whole world was sinning, Noah was righteous. In fact, it was the righteousness that God found. Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says God, Noah found grace in the sight of God. So Noah was not sinning when the world was sinning. When the whole world has been destroyed, there was nobody to sin. Noah started sinning. When the world was lukewarm, you were on fire. Now that everybody is getting on fire, you are becoming lukewarm. They had an expectation. Now, don't forget, write this down. Every enemy has an expectation concerning you. Every enemy has an expectation concerning you. Every enemy has an expectation concerning you. There's something the enemy expects. Number two, no enemy has a good expectation concerning you. Number one, they have an expectation. Number two, none of the expectation is good. The expectations they have concerning you are expectations that are negative. Very, very negative. The expectation that they have concerning you is negative. Number three, the expectation they have concerning you can be frustrated. You can stand on the word of God and frustrate the expectation. God can take you to a level like he took Esther in our days. In Esther chapter 9 verse 5, the Bible said God put them that they would do whatsoever they like to those that hated them. God can get to that point where he will place you at the level where you do what you like. That's what he said concerning the man called Saul. He said, when all these signs shall come upon you, 1 Samuel chapter 10, I believe from verse 7, 8 down, when all these signs shall come upon you, you shall do as occasion serve you. As occasion serve you. Meaning you shall do whatever you like. He said, because the Lord is with thee. When these signs shall come upon you, thou shalt do as occasion serve you, for the Lord is with thee. The presence of God God is with you. You shall do as occasion serve you. There are people today who have a mouth to sing, a mouth to shout. Their voice is amplified because God is with them. Thou shalt do as occasion serve you. Enter anywhere, do what you want, so long as under under God. Do what you want because God is with you. Amen. Somebody met Jesus one night. They called the man Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Those are names of nine people. Nicodemus if that's your name God bless you the ninth man Nicodemus he met Jesus at night and the reason he went to Jesus at night because he was one of the leaders of the synagogue and he said something profound in John chapter 3 from verse 2 down no man can do these great signs except God be with him Nicodemus acknowledged the fact that the manifestation of this grace is on the platform of divine presence is when God is with a person that this thing happens. Okay, no man can do the signs except God be with him. Mm. So the roots and the platform for signs and wonders is God being with me. So I began to study how can I make God be with me? I went to John chapter 8, verse 29. He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone because I always do the things that pleases him okay so if god must be with me i must always do the things that pleases him how can i do the things that please him hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 now faith is the substance of things for hebrews 11 1 to 6 the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good report through faith we understand that the words we are framed by the word of god so that things which we see we are not made of things which do appear by faith. Abel of more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained the witness that he was righteous. Though he been dead, God testifying of his gift, he been dead, yet speaketh by faith. Enoch walked with God. Bible says he was not found because God took him. Before his translation, he had a testimony that he pleased God. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. Oh, so if I must please God, I must have faith is that all i need to please god no romans chapter 8 verse 8 for they that are in the flesh cannot please god okay so if i must please god i must walk in faith and walk in the spirit because 
God, you cannot access God in the flesh. God is a spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24. God is a spirit. And it takes you becoming a spirit man to assess God. If you want to assess God in the flesh, you will keep revolving and keep struggling. But once you want to assess God, you must switch to the spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 9. Romans 8 9. He that has not the spirit of God is not of him. The spirit of God is the signature of God. The spirit of God is the signature of God. So when you have the spirit of God, you are of God. The spirit of God is the seal. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 30, Grieve not the Holy Spirit, with which you have been sealed until the day of redemption. When you get you buy something that is authentic, that is authentic, it is sealed. Okay? One of the reasons you seal things is for preservation. Is that true? Is that true? For preservation, for protection. The seal. It is sealed. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So how do I get to that point where my enemies, you know, when my, there's nothing I like like when the enemies think it's over. When they are, they are almost rejoicing. When they are almost concluding on you. And God gives them a surprise. One of the most exciting things about life is to be unpredictable. When people do not have an idea about your rising, you become like a cat with nine lives. Am I talking to somebody here? Throw a cat, it will never land on its back. It will avoid landing on its back. There are people that can never land on their back. There's a covenant on their head. To fight them is to fight God. Am I talking to somebody here? It's not by the will of their flesh, but by God that has showed them love. When the enemies are rejoicing. You see, that but the generation we are in now, one of the biggest problems of this generation is that we give out too much information. Everything about our life is, is what exposes us. Too much information about yourself. Too much information. Your birthday that should take people by surprise. From one month, you start announcing it. Birthday loading. Birthday loading. You, you just announce. And they are not even aware to make matters worse. Nine days to go. Are you celebrating an obituary? Nine days more. All the gifts, monetize them. Monetize the gift. Birthday, you do that and you are so looking forward to it. Announcing it. You are traveling, you announce it. You are getting married, you announce it. And people getting married these days, marriage is now like a problem. When somebody tells you his wedding is coming up, you, you almost have high blood pressure. Somebody sent me date and sent me accounts. I said, I don't understand. <laughs> sent me a date of wedding and sent me account number. You see, my wedding is coming up to something. I said, in those days when they say wedding is to attend, it's not account. Send me wedding and send me address. Let me send somebody there to attend. Today it has become an harassment. And I always tell people, when people are getting married, don't give them money. Give them money after wedding. Don't give them money before marriage. Don't encourage people into stupidity. If you are begging for money to marry, you are not qualified to marry. Forget this story. You are not qualified to marry. If you are begging for money to marry, you are not qualified to marry. That's the truth. I'm telling you out of experience. If you give them money for marriage, you will give them money to take care of their children. You give them money to feed their children, you will pay school fees. That is the truth. God gave Adam work before he gave him wife. Tend the garden. When there was a garden, he now says, sleep, I'll give you a woman. Today it has become an upside down arrangement. People want wife before work. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So you must first of all understand the, the, the meaning of what faith is. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, somebody has to get wife. You know, when somebody now finds a wife, that's where favor, he now obtain favor of the Lord. You don't understand Bible. You don't understand Bible. Listen, the Bible this this say either is looking for a wife. He didn't say that is looking for a wife. We'll find a good thing. He said that has already, already. It's a concluded matter. Are you following what I'm talking about? And, and he didn't say either is looking for a partner. So it's not every woman that's a good thing. Because not every woman is a wife. The Bible didn't say that look for a partner. Or either finds a partner, find a good thing. No, either find a wife. 
so don't just sit down the lady and be shouting you are a good thing you are a good thing if you are not a wife material you are a bad thing you are not a good thing that's what the bible says he that find it <laughs> you must be a wife and if you ask a lot of people why they are getting married now so much liability they want a man that can take care of them they want a man oh all their siblings are suffering they want a man that can take care of their sibling oh they have a, their father has a building they want a man that can complete it oh their mother's business you don't need a man you need a bank marry central bank because you don't need a husband you need a bank all those things you are saying I, i'm telling you the truth you need a bank what do you bring to the table what do you bring someone said to me daddy i want to tell you something i want somebody the kind of man she said pray for me to get married i was about to lay hands on the outside i said you must be the kind of man i want to marry i said ah. i didn't know that i have to ask i thought i would just pray he said ask me i said okay he said okay hmm. from the way she balanced i, I knew she can't marry i don't knew she can't marry you want to tell me you want to marry and you balance like this to give description i was listening he said he has to be very tall i said okay and she's very short too what so she has to be tall he has to have good shape i don't like men that are too fat i was looking at who was talking so and she was saying that and he has to be good looking papa he has to be good looking i said okay she was giving all the qualities said everything and the rest i said okay that description you just gave now is for married men it's not for single men somebody has made them that way they met a woman that that all those things you description you are giving is for finished product those who they are married that's the truth you think if there is a man like that you will meet him available <laughs> eh? they would have collected him stop looking for what does not exist stop looking for things that don't exist you want this you want that's how some young men want too they want a woman that is like this you know you see a young man in his late 40s he's not married early 50s why he wants a woman like this like this like this he wants somebody prim and proper and all the qualities he's talking about no young girl has it no young girl has it it's only a married woman and the married woman had it after going through process you want a girl that's very respectful a girl that will not look at any other man a girl that will focus on you alone are you jesus <laughs> are you jesus <laughs> the 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 loyalty some young men expect even christ does not demand such loyalty don't talk to anybody don't greet anybody if anybody greet you don't answer uh -uh. even jesus christ does not say that don't talk to anybody if they greet you don't answer if anybody give you money reject it eh? where is the place of favor <laughs> Where's the, if I reject money, somebody give me. How is God answering my pastor's prayer? Where's the place of favor? They give you anything, return it. Eh? Return it. Don't collect. If anybody say they want to help you, tell them you are not interested. Eh? For who? <laughs> Praise God. But but you know that's what you have nowadays. Ah uh ah. -uh. It's crazy. And I mean, when I see people do that, I just laugh. I say they will grow. They will grow. One of my children was crying, crying, called me, and she was crying, crying. For like two minutes, when she finished crying, I said, Hey, I don't have energy for this. what is it? He left me. I said, It's okay, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. God bless you. And I hung up the phone. And he sent a message, Dad, you don't even care. I said, No, I care. You will grow. Don't worry, you'll grow. Your problem is immaturity. When you grow, you understand life better. Amen no you don't carry emotion into courtship no you leave it for marriage don't carry emotion into courtship. don't carry all those love love you want to kill yourself any man that is doing that is not yet married calling somebody 20 times is because you have no school fees to pay when there are children and school fees you are cracking your head you, you two days you have not called and you are not aware <laughs> you can't even remember that you have not called for two days you are cracking your head for school fees you are cracking your head for rent and your wife says ah, you are not coming ah only me and parents, I will still call you on top. Ah, for what? <laughs> Praise the Lord. When the mama said to me, say, for the past three days, you have not told me you love me. I said, because since the last time I said it, I have not changed my mind. <laughs> so I don't have to be renewing it. The last one I told you, just hold that one, hold that one. And just believe that one I said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, 
Amen. How do I frustrate my enemies so that their joy can be cut short? Number one, stay close to God. Stay close to God. Stay close. Your proximity with God is what determines your solidity on earth. Your proximity with God determines your solidity on earth. John, James, sorry, James 4 verse 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God. Anytime you want God to be close to you, be close to him. You want to feel God's presence in your life. James 4 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. As you are, feel, as you are getting that close to him. You, to stay close to God is to be void and empty of satanic deposits. You are empty. John 14 verse 30. Jesus said the prince of this world cometh and he has nothing in me. Imagine a mortal. He could make that declaration that he has nothing in me. He has nothing. There's no property that he has in me. The prince of this world cometh. He said I know he's coming. That, that spirit that hit him on the cross. That was death. Death hit him. Death did not hit him because he, he sinned. Death hit him because he carried the sins of people. But for him he was blameless. I know he has nothing in me. Draw near to God. Be close to God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. It said, draw near to him with a true heart. A true heart. And that's why you must ask yourself daily. Are you close to God? How close are you to God? How close are you to God? How close are you to God? Moses saw the glory of God afar off. He always knew about God. He always knew about God. The mother raised him up in the act of Israel. Even in Egypt. All the mother taught him was the lifestyle of Israel. Even in Egypt. In Acts chapter 7 verse 31. The Bible says he saw it afar off. And he drew near. How close are you to God? How close are you to God? Acts 7 31. How close are you to God? You have to be close to God. You want your enemies to be frustrated continually. You want to win every single fight that comes your way. Then you must understand the place of proximity with God. How close are you to God? What does it take to be close to God? How do I get close to God? Number one. How do I get close to God? Devotion. Devotion. Devotion is your daily fellowship with God. To be on fire for two weeks and, and cold the next week, you lack devotion. To be on fire Monday to Friday, Saturday, you are weak, you don't feel like praying. There are people who are, who are looking at me now, they started wonders without number, but along the way, they dropped. They dropped. They dropped. They dropped. They were so consistent. They have this spirit that begins with so much zeal and zest, but anything they begin, they don't finish. There are some people, they are their problem. I remember then when we were in school, there are some people that will carry extra, what do they call it? To the exam hall. Not expo. There's a name they call it. Insurance. Is it insurance? I'll be assurance or something like that. There's a name they call it. They will carry it to the hall and they will see fail. There are some people that are so daft, carry the, the, the answer to the question, boil it inside water, give them to drink. Before exam, they will urinate it and sleep it. It's just nothing works, no consistency. Hmm. Consistency to God, devotion daily. Acts 17 11 the burial Christians were more noble than the Christians in Thessalonica they received the word of God with all readiness of heart and they said daily if these things were so consistency is the currency of the spirit one day David was speaking Acts chapter I'm sorry Psalm chapter 119 164 he says seven times a day will I praise you can you imagine David would do praise and worship seven times a day Several times a day. I'm sure I don't know, but I'm sure twice in the morning, twice at noon, and three times in the evening. Several times a day. Daily. Consistency with God. What, what happened to your devotion? Do you know why Elijah got to that point where Elijah could make declaration in, in 1 Kings 17 1? He said, The Lord God before whom I stand, I am a regular attendee of God's presence. Not to my visit. Today you are hot. The next day you are cold. Today you pray for one hour. The next day you pray for 30 minutes. You hear a message and you are so emotional. You cry and cry and cry and cry. 
as you cross the door your heart is hardened again this period you make up your mind to fast you do two three days after a while again you have you know, devotion being consistent being constantly permanently regularly on fire be constantly regularly on fire am i talking to somebody here to be close to god you need the spirit and the baptism of devotion baptism paul got to that point where paul had to crucify himself every day not every month every day first corinthians 15 31 paul said i die daily 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 if you are connected to this ministry from your heart i'm not talking about being a member just sitting down it's only sunday sunday see you amen i'm talking about those who are committed and connected you your being on fire will be consistent 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 daily devotion you wake up to pray is you you study god's word you are regular you are devoted you are dedicated to that act that's one of the biggest problems we have in the body many are not devoted that devotion is not there today they study their bible they can read like five chapters out of anger because they heard papa say he reads many chapters ah we must read two today is it not read we will read this bible we will read it this bible we will read it we will, if I, i'm angry I'm, I'm before december i will finish the bible i will finish the bible we, you have been saying it for three years now you are still in leviticus i will finish the bible i'll finish me this bible shape up and say i will finish the bible finish the bible you started mark mark you stop at mark four mark chapter four that's it mark chapter four <laughs> that mark chapter four finish the bible finish the bible you just say that procrastinate but you have not been able to be devoted am i talking to somebody here one of my beloved sons who have been around for more than 15 years he said to me you have not changed you have not changed you are just the same he said but now you are even more terrible you are hotter he said but you have not changed there is no change at all it's all of us at one point will go down will come up again will go down but you just they blow they go they blow like and you know you're just blowing your exhaust is hot and there are people one year you know low voltage you know low voltage low no there is 100 watts there's 60 watts there's some people that are that they are 30 watts and that 30 watts is low voltage so we don't know what to call it always cold everything makes you cold you prayed and prayed and prayed and just saw one bad dream you are discouraged i'm discouraged to pray do you have a choice okay now you are not praying what are you doing that's what life is you pray and fast the devil shows you a dream says that you are a liar you pray again it shows you another thing to weaken your faith you pray again stop acting as if you have alternative there's nothing else other than god either we serve god or we serve nothing else there's no alternative anywhere hold that hold fast to that which is right and there are people today that is just their weakness they can never be consistent for one month never for one month on fire no and the funny thing is that when such people are on fire for only three weeks they think they are the most spiritual you know <laughs> when i told the pastor he's very popular online i said to him i said come let me advise you there is something called privilege and there's something called advantage you can take and you can have an advantage and operate on that advantage but the day it crosses your head that you are the best thing that has happened after sliced bread you will understand that there are seven thousand that have not bowed their knees to bar there are people on fire i used to think I, I pray at least i try a bit when i went to the mountain for the first time i hated myself i saw one man just put his hand on his on the pot Oluwa, 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 Oluwa. for hours i was timing him i was just looking at him i was speaking in tongues i was going around him Oluwa. Oluwa. I was walking around him i was praying in tongues praying in tongues i prayed for the while i came back he was still there sweat everywhere oh, ah! 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 i was looking at him i was praying i was going i was looking at him 
at least an average of two three hours on the spot i just sat i started thinking of my life before, before that time before that time everyone would say ah no he can pray ah, he can pray 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 when i got there started thinking i see one spot only two hours we are not competing but we can be challenged nobody's competing with anybody but you can challenge you can't see somebody on fire and he says yeah let him be doing his own everybody be doing your own i'm doing my own let everybody i can't kill myself or anything i'll be doing my own but doing their own when it comes to the things of the spirit somebody's on fire kill yourself kill yourself if you have to be like him kill yourself are you following me your pastor will stand on the altar in one service 50 scriptures 70 scriptures 100 scriptures does he have 10 head okay what is wrong this sunday i say open to next sunday open to the other will turn to won't you get home and say this thing they are telling me to turn to open to turn to i want to know it are you following what i'm saying are you following me on fire be challenged be inspired be inspired somebody should be able to challenge you but it has to be on the platform of your devotion devotion you're in bible study you don't miss it you don't miss it you are in solution service you don't miss it you are anything you make up your mind to achieve in life you can achieve ah uh, see we grew up and there was one boy that wanted to be a herbalist he was small old. that was his he said he wanted to be flying and i said we'll be looking at him then he said he wants to be flying that he wants to have power so he can vanish appear just appear in your room like this pack all your money pack before you are coming you just disappear <laughs> he wanted such things one time i saw him in germany i saw him wearing regalia with a retinue of white people following him that was his dream to be a is powerful one and he has achieved it i saw him with big, so he greeted me I, I saw him with funny dress but that he looks old and it's my age mate he looks old gray and fat and why are you like this? <laughs> I say we passed on now. Now wow. <laughs> I was just looking at him. I said, this guy he achieved his dream, herbalist. <laughs> Many of you think that spirituality is what? You think it's easy? Spirituality is discipline and determination. You think it's easy to fly? To be a witch? To fly? Oh yeah, fly, fly now fly if you think it's easy to fly to become a witch to fly it is work it is work people are working on their two legs they have problem you now suspend yourself in the air you say you are flying fly when you land you tell us what you saw there <laughs> it's take determination there are people you see who have extra powers in the occultic world ask them the price they pay ask them ask them them i remember them when we were in manowar how many of you passed through manowar and boy scout manowar so you see all those lights they are lying to us as a strong man they, if you if you are, you are you are on the parade and they fly pet you don't move you will, you will blind <laughs> i remember then they'll take us to silos forest mosquito bah! yeah a man <laughs> i remember one time they took me somewhere my mother didn't know where i went i came out with slowly i walked up bee the bee stung my face I was there the bee was was eating me up stinging me you are, as a man you don't you don't touch it you are a man you are a man i left there with as a man with a swollen eye <laughs> swollen eye they said that's discipline that's discipline and i told our leader there i said see my eyes said, yes this is a sign you are a man when i got home my mother reminded me that i was a boy caress lap where are you coming from with this eye Ooh, boy. where did you go <laughs> praise the lord the real act of discipline is spiritual exercise spiritual ex when your back wants to rest your spirit says it's time to pray consistency is the currency of the spirit can i hear a loud amen, amen. acts chapter 5 verse 42 the disciples were in the temple daily somebody said daily daily your daily devotion is what culminates into your destiny your daily devotion is what culminates into your destiny your daily devotion 
it's what culminates into your death so for you to stay close to god you must understand the act of devotion number two you must understand the act of service serve him the word of the lord declares in job 36 11 if they shall wait and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 3 it talks about that we shall fear him love him serve him deuteronomy chapter 6 love him fear him 6 verse 13 love him fear him the reason you are saved is to serve him so you are saved to serve acts 8 and um, exodus 8 1 exodus 8 20 exodus 9 1 let my people go that they may serve me exodus 9 to 13 let my people go that they may serve me. exodus 10 3 let my people go so god wants you to be released to serve how do you serve god you serve god with your time you serve god with your resources you serve god with your ideas you serve god with your contact your time your resources your contact your ideas your money praise god serve with your time your everything about you serve god with it how can somebody be in a church and he's not in a department he said no me i don't like i don't like problem i don't like problem and i'm just coming to church i want to serve my god quietly and go to heaven quietly i'm sorry you are serving satan quietly i may go to hell quietly because you cannot be with god and not serve and not serve she said no me i just want to be coming quietly to church and just go like that god said there is a blessing that is reserved only for those who who what serve 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 and that's what god expects of every one of us that we should be servants we should be servants. if anyone wants to be great is it john chapter 12 verse 26 that jesus said if any man serve him with my, with my father honor that where he is where i am there you'll be your six if any man serve let him follow me and where i am also my servant will be if any man serve me him will my father honor there is nothing that commands honor like service lovingly are you following me Sir, i never thought in this life that any what is that a pastor will now be blessed and now no i loved god with passion i remember the first time there, listen this is not to mock anybody anybody everybody has a beginning i remember the first time i went to preach and they decided to appreciate me three people gathered and gave me this small nylon bag of appreciation after preaching it was pumpkin you know pumpkin leaf you know pumpkin there's something called pump you know pumpkin the soft huh oh, yeah that's a look native name ugu but it's pumpkin come on be posh pumpkin <laughs> that's what they gave me as thank you as they call it honorarium to appreciate me they gave me i went to preach before i got home it melted so i was looking for the offering it has melted second time they blessed me it was four people that gathered they wrapped the thing wrap it wrap it wrap it it took me almost three minutes to open all the wrapped thing they gathered around you know those days this one we appreciate you all the elders will come you are a blessing to us they will now pray for you the next one will come that this message you gave to us mm, it touched me it touched me this will cry after they finish crying they give me the gift I, I went to where i was staying i was losing 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 ah. later i could feel it was a bottle when i opened it fanta amen praise the lord Fanta, i was excited i was even shocked that they gave me some I said, ah, they gave me something for preaching why but i was just loving god i was just following god i never knew loving god and following god not today people call enter ministry and they're looking they are, they are looking for yet they are selecting where they should say no i don't have calling for village i don't have calling for village say no say no because i know what i saw I saw you pay. Clear. Very clear. Very clear. But God told me that my, my ministry is for Europe. But I was ready. Loving and serving. 
serving and following excitedly praise the lord praise the lord following excitedly but today that's the problem we have today everybody wants to appear before their time somebody's a gospel artist and has really just two records or two singles or two albums or whatever it is and expect to be treated like a vip in a program they must come and carry you with a car they must give you protocol if you see it it is glory to god but that should not be what you are ministering minister because you love god if you have to enter okada enter the okada go there and minister your life will not always be like that go there i used to have an okada it was a roadmaster you know roadmaster those big okada then if i finish preaching someone will now walk, now walk to me man of god you are a blessing to us they'll be looking around you are a blessing they'll now squeeze one thing and put in your hand you are a blessing we'll see you okay we'll see you we'll come and see you see i'm waiting till now many have not seen amen excited i was going somewhere to preach and bam bam in lagos very go pack up i job better molue entered molue i got to the bus stop there I saw one small then it was this lady's bike i entered the lady's bike the ushers and protocols were outside waiting for the car that would bring me i came down from the car i said ah how are you he said fine fine enter 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 they were looking around as well as your pastor see what's your business with our pastor enter enter you know as this can't be guest speaker for what no now they say enter enter i said i want to see your pastor say, enter inside now you are blocking people enter so i waited back they told the protocol to mark me i don't want to enter maybe i want to do something to mark me they didn't know i was guest speaker guest speaker that came up from ladies bike that's what brought me i came down from there because the vehicle stopped gospel must be preached and after a while the pastor came ah, man of god what's the happened where's, where's the car i said car which car cars bro stop there i enter mole mole enter bus stop bus stop we enter ladies bike we did now we go preach the preach <laughs> And the man said, okay. And all the protocols say, yeah, is the one? Hey, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I looked at them and I felt bad. Not bad because of what they did to me. I just imagined them doing it to others by leading them to the church because they don't have anything today. If you are saying sorry to me, what, what are you saying about to other people? Because you feel they have nothing now. So you despise them. Who has despised the days of little beginning? He says, shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. That's the truth. God knows. Huh? I'm this is still me. I've not changed. There's nothing like big pastor. No, it's only God that is big. If I'm going to minister in my plane, everybody traveling with me enter the plane. There's nothing like man of God fly. People go by road. What nonsense is that? All of us, let's sit down there. Let's everybody enter. In life, you must get to that point where you understand that there's nothing in this world nothing jesus one day was washing people's feet you know why he said i'm teaching you what to do i tell people i say you see why i give all these people opportunity i'm teaching them that when they become great tomorrow they should give somebody opportunity there's nothing not in this world i remember the first time i traveled abroad and i entered the plane first time abroad plane no I knelt down by my seat. Plain. The person sitting by me was waiting. Oh, God, stand up now. I was thanking God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Whatever I am now, it is by your inside plane. You know, if you don't answer what the plane is, you should know that economy, you don't have too much allowance. So the guy was wanting to go inside. I knelt down. Many are dying. Many are perishing, but I appreciated him. I said, Me, enter plane. I'm going to preach. Jesus, thank you. I landed at the airport. I knelt down publicly. I said, Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. I went there to minister. I ministered, came back, protocols and all. We came to pick me. They were following me. I saw up to like three cars. I was confused. I said, ah, What's the matter? They said to escort. I said, Hey, me. I lay down by the car. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. I sat in the car. I went there. I came back. 
Then the first time somebody say, okay, enter what they call a business class. I, the lady say, I know you are a pastor. Say, where are you going? I say, I'm going. Say, no, 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 no. There are two vacant seats in the business class. Sit down here. I say, me. I should. It was first class actually. I should fly first class. Say, yes. I let down by the plane. Jesus. Thank you. Me that when I carried my Bible, people were laughing at me because they felt I didn't need to carry the Bible. I come from a family that's privileged. My father is rich. My mother is rich. So why are you preaching? Because they felt the preaching was for people who are broke, who are poor, who are suffering. So why? Your father has money. What are you looking for? I said, I'm not preaching because of, I love Jesus. I remember in town somewhere, they used to call that place Gola Heights. Those of you in our church know what I'm talking about. Gola Heights. I remember somebody had my trousers because he printed posters for me and I didn't pay. He traced me to Awochi from Benin. Trace me. How that guy knew I was in Awochi till now, I don't know. There was no GSM at that time. So I go like, bro, no be you be this, no be you be this, no be you be this. Is this not <laughs> Help me. You must pay for it. I did that program and I finished. God, it was in town. In ICE then, not the feed, the classroom. God told me, don't take an offering. I didn't take no offering. I finished the program. And blocks me, held my trousers. People gathered. You must pay. You must pay. So one of them said, Are you from this place? I said, Yes, who is your father? I mentioned my father's name. Everybody shock. Is your father? Is your father? One by one, they started leaving the guy. Each of them could tell. This one say, The father helped my mother, gave my mother this. The father did this. The father everything testimony of what my father did for them he said you you that's your father you don't have money to pay for poster my father there wasn't saved he wasn't born again so he didn't he didn't understand what i meant by say god said that i should preach how but i was just loving god i was just serving him are you following me i remember the first car i had my father gave me a car mazda 626 red I was worshiping God one day and the voice of God said, Do you love me? I say yes, give out this car. That was when my father concluded that my madness was confirmed. I had the voice of God to go and give the car. I went out. I gave the pastor the car. My father said, Where's your car? Um Holy Spirit said, I should give the car. Uh, where? Where did you see him? Holy Spirit? He spoke to me. Uh, how? I heard him. Why am I not hearing him? give out the car praise the lord but today the christianity i see now listen the christianity i see in the life of people i shake my head people will fast and pray because of what they are looking for people will become minister people are angry i'm not getting money see where they put me money is not coming they're not rubbish church such people no matter what they do in life they don't go far because their motive is wrong and today God has blessed me that thing is still in me it has not changed that nature everyone close to me can tell you is still inside me it has not changed put food on the ground I will sit on the ground I will eat on the ground put it on the stool I will sit on the stool it nothing has changed we went to London myself and the whole family and they gave us a place to stay two rooms one sitting room and we are eight, about eight I told all the guests to enter a room I told my man that on that chair to enter a room i carried um blankets put on the ground this was last two years or so and i was sleeping there i'll finish come back lie down there go to go and preach come back lie down there and my wife said no come to the bed i said no now you push you relax i didn't feel nothing if i didn't tell you now will you know it doesn't mean anything to you now you are so selective you have become so proud and you have not even started though you have become so proud so arrogant so arrogant this city with papa is dressing long sleeve and shirt ah, ah. papa should deck very casual what is this now he should dress talking and put beds on his stomach like village headmaster someone said to me why you just wearing shirt and and trousers you are looking so poor you are looking not natural i said is he your is he your cloth is it your body is it your dressing leave me i'm fine i'm fine 
I should tie my neck like, like somebody on suicide mission. Tie my neck with tie. <laughs> Listen to me. If you must go far in life, love him and serve him. Remove your mind from all this nonsense. I know many pastors that will never do well. Whether they are general of Asia, whether they are working with ministries, their heart is bad. Their work with God is based on achievement. What has come in, what has not come in. Know the ones I can tell this one will go far. They are careless, they are not conscious of what they are getting. Am I communicating? Yeah, it's Pastor Moses here. Yeah? Do, do you do they pay me in this church? Eh? I'm the overseer of this church, I'm not on salary, I'm the general overseer. Okay. Eh. They don't pay me but they take from me oh. take a lot the reason they don't pay me is because they can't pay me the day they pay me then my my my, my finances will revolve around that salary but i look up to the hills where comment my help your problem is that you are conscious of what you want from god look at you why, why are you downcast i will believe in god for finances finance didn't come that's why you are that's why you are feeling this way I'll be believing God that that God should give me a partner. God has not given. That's why you're feeling this way. Can I show you people who are believing God to be alive for the next day? That when they see that next day, they say, ah, I made it to Friday. Jesus, one more day. One more day. One more day. One more day. I had a son that will come to this place. He will complain, 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 complain. So one day we went somewhere. He flew to that African country. So I called one of my sons there. I said, can we go to any hospital emergency ward? I see unit. Let me just, I want to drop small, small money for one or two people. That's the way you can enter such a place. I said, I want to drop small money. As we entered there, I took him. Before we came out, his handkerchief was soaked. He saw people's leg. He saw people's mouth like that. And he said like that for four or five days. I mean like that. It doesn't close. The mouth cannot close. Syringe. We saw a man, they would blend food. We would use syringe and draw the food and put the food in a pipe. It can't pass through his mouth. They would blend it, blend. You know blender? They would blend it, he would draw it with a syringe and would put to the pipe and bend the pipe. The food will enter. He would blend again. And they saw us and did like this. They greeted. He still has hope that one day it will be better. And you, you have your legs, you have your hand, you have your mouth. And you say you are angry with God because you don't have money because um, somebody offended you because somebody have you seen have you seen have you seen people who are appreciative a man in america told me he said i came to Auchi to see you he said but i've already paid for this he said he has bought his coffin he has prepared he has written his very hard he said because the people in america know that he's not coming back but say at least let him step into the place of a man of God who he believes before he will go. That he's ready to go. Because they give him a report that he has six days to live. I saw a man who knew he was about to die and was smiling. He was smiling. He said, I just said, let me come and worship God. Because next few days, I looked at him with anger in my system. I said, because of this kind of preparedness, God said, I should tell you, he has added 60 more years to your life. Till today, this was 2018, till today, he's still alive. Hear me, child of God. He said, how can you strive with your maker? Sometimes God will look at you. When you are complaining, devil will smile. You know why? God remembered overnight when they came battling for your soul. When they threw an arrow that you will not wake up, he shielded it. And you woke up, you look around, you are crying. I can't even pray, I'm not going to church. Devil smiles. He said, I just shielded him from death last night. There was an accident. The vehicle, that accident was concluded to take you. Bah, bah, bah. You came out without a scratch. And you come out, you stand there. Everybody died except me. To you, it's very normal. But if only you know that was your end. But God said, it's not your time. When you remember these acts of God, you remember the preservations of God, then you understand that what, what, what the psalmist meant when he said what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visitest him thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim 
a little lower than Elohim. Who are you? Who are you? What what is special about you that God is preserving you? What is special? What is special about your life? That God is keeping you alive and yet you are angry, you are offended, you are provoked, you are offended at God. And God looks at you. And looks at you. I have seen battles in my life. And I'll tell you the truth. No matter the battles I see, the only time I get broken at all is when I consider the wickedness of heart of a man. That's the reason that breaks me. When I sit back and consider, that's the reason that breaks me. I'm like, can people be this wicked? Can people be this wicked? That's the reason that breaks me. I've seen betrayer. I've seen backstab. I've given somebody a car. And as the person was walking out of where he took the car, he was planning against me. I've seen betrayer. I've seen all kinds of betrayer. All kinds of backstab. But I still help people today because I love Jesus. I've, I've gotten many reasons to just tell everybody, just go to your way. I'm not interested. I've seen. And God told me clearly, the proof of your work with me is your ability to forgive. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah? Your ability to forgive. You will see battles in life, but your love for God is what carries you on. You are seeing you are seeing you are hungry. There are people that have everything you can think of. A young girl wrote a long episode. Somebody sent it to me and I read it. The father was a very wealthy man. But the father was sick and he died of COVID. The father was kept in the room. Nobody could touch him because they don't want to be infected. She said, I sat down. And she said, she sat down and watched her father die. With all the money he had. No help. No remedy. That then she saw how useless material things are. But the problem now is, that is where you are now basing your Christianity on. Look at my life. Have I achieved anything? And when you talk like that, you are trying to equate yourself with people who have cars, who have houses. Do I have anything? Look at my life. Do I have anything? What do I have? And I'm, I'm serving Jesus. What a, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. You are equating that and there are people that have that in prosperity and they have a deadly disease that money cannot cure. And then you are there, healthy and well. And your only act God, God is that he has not given you this or given you that or given you this one day the Lord said to me I've blessed you a bit how would you feel if you don't have them anymore I said should I give all of them out today and the Lord I didn't hear his voice again I said don't even bother yourself let me do it for you let me give everything out today because they mean nothing to me are you listening get to that point in your life get to that point in your life where your love for jesus is not because something is happening for you or because nothing how many times have we seen somebody come out to give testimony just come and say, praise the lord our sister is to testify that she's alive she's well she's healthy not sick the enemy has intended the love of God kept her alive. And people will clap. Who will clap? No, they'll say. Is that why she's out? Is that why she's out? And so, not knowing that means a lot to God. What we want to hear? The man now came. He now met somebody. He didn't know the person. The person now wrote one check. Now gave him money. So, so millions. Hey! As far as we are concerned, that's what's called a testimony. That's what's called a testimony. So right now, before we take the communion, I mean, I can't even go further. I'm trying to go further, but I have so much to share, but I can't because the Holy Ghost is here. And there, has, there are so many of us who need to just, first of all, ask for mercy. Because you have grieved the Almighty God. 
because your, 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 your whole life is full of complaints complaints God is unhappy go ahead and just ask for mercy Go ahead and just wash it. He's heaven to me. Just ask for mercy. Your presence is heaven to me. Lord, show me mercy. Ask him for mercy. Kalikato bragadash agadash. Loving God, loving God, loving God. He never fails me yet. He never fails me yet. Jesus Christ. You never face me. This is one thing I know. You are the only one I know. Jesus Christ. You never fail me. Oh, you never fail me. You never. Jesus Christ, you never fail me. This is what you are the only one I know. Jesus Christ, you never fail me. This is one thing I know. You are the Holy One I know. Jesus Christ, you never me. Thank you for life. Thank you. No matter what you are going through, thank you. The fact that There is hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion. Thank you for life. Thank you for Thank you for life. No matter all you have passed through, you are still living. You are still here. <laughs> I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. Oh, I still have joy. Oh, oh, oh. 
is taking you through a process when God is taking you listen to this when God is taking you through a process people will call you foolish when I left Lagos and came to Aochi I lost all my friends they kept telling me you are going to waste your time you are going to a village until people give you a name for obeying God your obedience is not complete until they call you foolish and they asked me a question what are you what are you going to do there because even then when I sit in Lagos I tell them Lagos is not civilized for me that's how much dream and vision how wide and big my mind was I said Lagos no Lagos is too small I said, ah, you can't do ministry yeah. I said no Lagos what's in Lagos island mainland what's that no it's too small and God told me leave that place and come here everyone I'm telling you the truth I lost friends I lost contact I lost all 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 I'm not saying some all left I didn't have one after staying one month in Aochi one particular week I cried from Monday till Saturday I will cry and cry say Lord is this how my life will be just tell me to go just give me an instruction am I not done he said no you are going to stay I have a plan for you today most of those people come to fire night now they will come here and sometimes it will take them days to meet with me when they come I hug them I shake their hand and I see them crying they say we tell people that we know you they say, ah, shut up you can't know him I say ah, what to bring picture old picture they say no this one is not him ah no this, this cannot be him say this is only man say this no 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 that is not him he say now we just look and we ask is this the same there's if God is interested in your life the first thing he will do is to confuse you God will confuse you first he will make you go through some things that you'll be crying all of those periods look at David as soon as he anointed David from one cave to another, David, David did not understand himself listen to me can I say this to you many of you now who are praying for direction will not get direction you will not get fast in next year you will not get Let, meet the, the most accurate prophet you will not get direction because what you are going through now is your wilderness experience there's no way God will direct you out of it he will only give you grace to go through it what am I doing here Lord what am I doing here Lord you go here you fast here. no word it's like heaven is closed God wants you to learn some things about life he wants you to learn how men are he wants you to learn about the hearts of people he wants you to learn how to appreciate kind gestures so that when you get to that point you place value one time i asked the lord a question i said i was born into a wealthy family when i was a younger a younger uh, a young child the car we point is the car that takes us to school sometimes we look at the color of uniform the color of the car that was how much cars were in the compound we had cooks you are the cook that prepares solid, you are the cook that prepares cereals, you are the cook that prepares grains, different cooks. But when God called me, God took me out, made sure there was a problem between me and my father, took me out into the street to know what hunger is. And then I asked the Lord, why am I going through all of this? So, so that when I bless you, when people say they are hungry, you will know what it means. He said, but you cannot know now because you were born into plenty. When food will go rotten things will go rotten you open the fridge you have all kinds of meat going rotten we will carry through full crate of egg and throw it away full crate because it was too much he said you cannot learn from that so what i'll do son he took me out i knew what hunger was i know what hunger and i know the kind of i know levels of hunger i know levels of what some of you call hunger that your stomach is, brrr, that's not hunger when hunger starts this is where you feel it side of your head yeah and that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the beginning that's the foundation of hunger not even the zenith it starts here then when hunger becomes serious it lives here it comes here here from there when hunger becomes serious it becomes prophetic you start seeing things then the third level of hunger is where you start hearing voices you are hungry you'll be hearing voices you'll be hearing voices 
Then the final level of hunger, you become, you become like an inanimate object. Even a slap, you don't feel anything. You have left this realm. I went through all the stages of hunger. So when somebody says, I'm hungry, I don't, I don't, I don't ask you. I just say, take, take, take. Go on, eat, go on, eat. Because I've been there. The kind of hunger that you put your stomach, you are looking for just somewhere cool to put the stomach. I remember one time, I had some gari in my house. I prepared eba. You know eba? There was no meat. There was no soup. So I took oil and put salt. I was eating eba with the oil and salt. That's what I was eating. And to me, that was enjoyment. I was, I was eating for some days. I will boil it, put it in the oil. So Now, if that is how you were born, it's understandable. But to have been born in plenty, when my mother wants to punish us when we are young, she will give us a lot of meat. We'll be crying. So you went outside, you come, 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 yeah, yeah, share that meat. Finish it, finish it. And some of you, I know you will like that kind of punishment. <laughs> they will take like three pieces, mommy, it's okay. You must finish it. No, no. But God said, with this life, you will think that life is easy. Let me pull you out and make you suffer. So I went there and went through it. So some of you are going through something now. Let me tell you. Anything you are bankrupt of today is what you are going to have in abundance tomorrow. If what you are suffering from now is money, it means you are going to be so wealthy. God wants you to learn some things. If you are sick in body, it's because God, there's a healing anointing upon you. Look at men who are here. Look at someone like Bishop David Oedipo. He had tuberculosis. Today, he ministers healing. Look at Kenya Hagen. At 17, he had a heart disease. Was about to die. Before he died, he ministered healing. Look at Bishop Idahosa. When he was born, the father said they should throw him, out, throw him out because he was very sickly. He stayed in the womb for a long time before he came out. Today, he, he, God used him mightily, the miraculous. Look at me. I stayed over 10 months in the womb. I came out of the womb and I was born a stammerer. To pronounce one word, I would hit my feet. But when God came, God healed me. Sometimes people beg me now. They say, you have too fast. You are too fast. You talk too fast. You talk too fast. But I was not born like that. Check every one of them who becomes a servant of God. Check their history. There's something. Check a Joseph who becomes a prime minister in Egypt. He was sold by his brothers. He was too pampered by his father. And God said, this one, with this kind of... They gave him coat of many colors. He was too pampered. God said, no. Greatness is not for those who are pampered. It's for those who have suffered. Those who have passed through process. Hallelujah. Those who have passed through process. Those who have been through a lot. That's what God has in mind. Whatever you are, I want you to understand something. That what you think you are going through now is a preparation for your next level. The commandments of God, first, first John 5 verse 3. He says, commandments are not grievous, for this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. First John 5, 3 and 4. Are you ready? Lift your hands. I'm beginning to tell the Lord Jesus how much you love him despite all you are going through. Tell him how much you love him. Despite the battles. Despite the high waters. Despite the mountains. Despite the challenges. Tell him. I still love you, Lord. I still love you. I still love you. I know you have the best for me. I know you have reserved the best for me. Tell him how much you love him, how much you love him. Compassion, eh, Jesus. Oh, I love you. Compassion, eh, Jesus. How I need you. Your feelings for me. Makes me fall in love with you. Carry me along. Carry me along. Father, we speak grace. Today we receive strength, we draw virtue to continually love you and depend on you. We ask today that the grace to be close to you, we receive it. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands. How I love you Compassionate Jesus 
Father, we ask for your grace upon this for signs, wonders, and miracles. That everyone that partakes of this shall get a blessing. Amen. Shall get a testimony. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, you are not coming out. They are coming to you. You just take one. Everything is here. But the bread, but the wine is sealed. Take it. Don't open it. Just take it. And I'll tell you what to do. Not for children. Not for children. Just take it. And I'll tell you what to do. Take it there. You feel Spread yourself. Spread. Spread. Makes me fall in love with you. Carry me along. Compassionate Jesus. Jesus. Just take it. Don't open it. Don't open it. Don't open it. Just take it. Compassionate Jesus. Don't open it. Just take it. 